Hi there, and welcome to the Creative Operations Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Groom, and in this podcast, we'll be talking with creative operations leaders in all kinds of industries, from franchising to finance, from healthcare to hospitality and beyond. We'll be looking to uncover best practices and to see trends that are coming to help you keep your creative operations on brand and on budget at the same time. Enjoy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Creative Operations Podcast 2.0. I'm your host, Kevin Groom. And today, instead of having a guest with us, I wanted to spend a little bit of time on a topic that is becoming an issue of kind of increasing importance we've seen for creative operations professionals all over the place. Uh, And that is user management. Generally speaking, folks who are in the creative end of business uh, tend not to think of people as quote unquote users. Uh, and, and that makes perfect sense. Of course, throughout their careers, creative operations professionals have um, worked with clients. They've worked with customers. They've worked with stakeholders. But more and more these days, we have to think of those different constituencies in their role, if you will, as users of a system. Uh, often a creative operations system like campaign drive um, that is not just in the hands of the creative operations professionals alone. So today I wanted to spend just a few minutes on some key issues in user management. Uh, I'm going to break it down into some very simple stuff uh, and we'll use campaign drive as a, a, a demonstration platform for some of these issues, but hopefully what we'll cover are just basic concepts of user management that will help you, if you're new to this game, uh, to think about your stakeholder community in these slightly more technical terms. There are three topics that we'll cover, three topics that I'd like to cover with uh, the audience today. First one is how do you welcome users into a system? How do you provision, as the technologists would say, accounts for these users in a manner that's uh, efficient for them and friendly for them, efficient for you as a system manager, uh, and that's also over time secure? and relatively um, convenient and not intimidating, uh, but convenient uh, for your users as well. The second topic I want to cover is once you've created those accounts, how do you fine tune the user experience so that the right people have the right capabilities and they're seeing the right content uh, and not seeing things that are either irrelevant to their needs or perhaps inappropriate for their needs. So think of that as your second topic. First, provisioning the account, and second, roles and permissions. And then finally, the third one is assessing user activity. Now, this is a topic that has a lot to do with reporting, uh, but doesn't have to get too analytical in its nature. Having a good back of the envelope kind of sense of who's using the system and with what kind of impact on their business and on the business and the brand overall, that's all we're really looking for. So three topics we'll cover. Let's dive right in. I want to start. You can see on my screen right now that I'm looking at the Campaign Drive platform. And this is a demonstration brand that we set up so that we could talk about issues in a general way. You'll notice that it's a coffee bean um, chain, if you will, uh, that has dozens, if not hundreds of users around the country. Let's talk for a second about what it means um, for a user to become a user on this system. And this is where I think you'll find that thinking about your experience and your user's experience up front can make life a lot easier for everybody going forward. And here's why. Because the way a user first encounters a system is the first impression that they have of it. If it's friendly and relatively convenient, relatively practical, you'll tend to see that folks are less suspicious and more likely to adopt the system and begin to add it to their daily workflow, as opposed to a system where they have to wait for weeks or or, or even longer uh, to receive an account, and when they do finally get an account, to find that it's not fine-tuned to their needs. So here you'll see that we have the user registration area of the Campaign Drive platform set up. First thing you'll notice, and something you'll want to think about with all of your systems, not just a local marketing system like Campaign Drive, but any system that has a distributed user community. First, you want to make sure that folks have the ability, if if it's appropriate, to register themselves on the system, uh, to be able to create their own account and then either 
submitted for approval or to be automatically approved. Now, here's an interesting point. If you can give folks the ability to sign up and begin using the tool instantly, if you can use auto approval, that's a wonderful way to make sure that you you build on the momentum that your users have, first by greeting the system and meeting the system for the very first time, and then getting value from it in their very first session. So if you can automatically approve users, you'd love to be able to turn that option on. But of course, you might not be able to. And here's a bunch of things that you'll want to think about with, again, a local marketing system or any distributed platform. First, how many uh, locations and or regions of your business should your users be able to have access to and to operate on behalf of? In the campaign drive instance, you'll see here with location settings um, that we have the ability to allow users to register for any one of our locations in this coffee bean chain um, or to register just for a single location. You'll notice that we can turn on those location settings or turn them off as we see fit. And during the registration process, we can give lots and lots of help uh, to users so that they make the right choices. Here's what's great about allowing users to configure their own accounts. If you've got even more than a few dozen users out there in the field, you can save yourself a ton of work and allow users to manage their own accounts in a very flexible and user-friendly kind of way. Of course, if you need to um, control that experience much more tightly at the headquarters level, you can always turn uh, your auto approval off. You can always make sure that folks are submitting their requests for accounts to you. But if you do that, here's the thing to make sure of. You have the time to respond, or somebody on your team has the time to respond promptly to user requests, user account creation requests. Here's what we found over the years. Um, when there's a significant lag uh, between the request for an account and the provisioning of the account, even a week um, is a long, long time from a user's point of view, we can see those first user adoption statistics go down significantly. So if you're going to turn auto approval off and actually approve users by hand, be sure that you're ready to take on that workload. Now, the next thing I want you to see um, is you can also give users the ability to choose between different roles, or you can automatically assign their roles. This is using the campaign drive platform. Here's what's nice about having users specify the role that they want to use. Very often, in distributed brands, we find that folks know the level of permission that they need and are pretty darn good at requesting the appropriate level of permission. Again, depending on the level of security that you need in your business, you might turn approval on so that you can review those settings. But even so, if you can get users to define the experience they themselves need, you have a much lower level of work for yourself in user management, and you usually have a much higher degree of user satisfaction, which just leads long-term to greater ROI. So those are the things I want you to think about when you're provisioning accounts for your system. Make it fast and easy for your users. Give them as much freedom to define their role and their geography, their geographical scope as you feel comfortable giving them. And err on the side, if you can, of being a little bit more generous in those provisionings. You can always tighten things up, but if you can get users fast, easy, productive access, you'll find that the system delivers value, your users are happier, and you have a little bit less work at the end of the day. Now, given that we've talked about creating accounts, I wanted to talk a little bit about how roles are really defined around something called um, permissions. So let's dive into that in the admin area of Campaign Drive. Here, under the System tab, you'll find that we have a, a table called Roles. And here you can see that we have uh, a number of roles that come kind of, if you will, shrink-wrapped with the system when you unpack it for the very first time. Really important to know that these roles may or may not be appropriate for your particular brand. They could be um, something that you need to edit just a little bit, or you might need to create entirely different roles. And your business might not need five or six roles as we see here. You might need a dozen or two dozen different roles. 
Make sure whatever marketing system you're setting up that you've got the ability to create those roles with the appropriately granular permissions so that you can fine tune the user experience. Here's what I mean by that. Let's take a look at the most generalized role of a normal user. Here you can see in Campaign Drive that we have out of about 150 different permissions, we've turned on about 25 or 30 permissions. This is a user who is relatively confined in their user experience and in their authority, but still has enough power to get real work done at the end of the day. And you'll notice that besides the normal user, if you will think of that as a local marketer out in the field, when we look at higher level users, let's say a document approver, you'll see that we've turned on a great many permissions. We've given these folks something very close to administrative authority over the system. Once again, here's what you're looking for, to think about these issues of authority and control up front to make sure your platform allows you to define those rules in a point and click way. And then at least once a quarter, take a look at your roles and permissions and make sure that the decisions you made earlier in the year still pertain to at the current time. What you'll find, especially in uh, environments where there is more and more scrutiny on your IT infrastructure, your Regular review of your user access and permissioning is actually a best practice that can really tie in and help you demonstrate, it, demonstrate that your department is as mature in its management of technology as the IT team really needs you to be. And then the last topic I wanted to cover, and hopefully this has been uh, at least a good introduction to the topic of user management, is the effect of proper unit user management on actual usage. So don't forget, at least on an annual basis, to go and take a look at whatever kind of reporting your system provides. In this particular case, uh, here we're looking at dashboard reporting and campaign drive. And I love to look at this in terms of, let me um, run this out for a few more additional months. We'll go back to the beginning, let's say, of this quarter or the prior quarter. Here you'll see that we have 22 users accessing the system over the period of time uh, that we were discussing. Um, and here we can get very, very quickly to the most active users. Here's what I like to do. In digging down into the detail, get a sense of the number of times your users are accessing the system and the number of transactions that they've conducted on the system. When you download that data and really begin to analyze it at the user level, here's what you'll find. You can find your 800 pound gorilla kinds of users, those folks who are really stretching your systems as far as they can, using them for all they're worth, and who are likely developing some best practices um, that you can share with other members of the user community, or might be developing some bad habits that you actually want to nip in the bud before they become too widespread. In all of this, what I find is that regular views of your usage data help you to decide how well you've provisioned the system, how well you've permissioned the system, and how well you've communicated to users the value they can get from it. Those three things add up to user satisfaction, uh, user adoption, and ultimately return on the investment that you've made in the platform, not just in the dollars that you spend on the subscription but in the time that you devote to the managing and the feeding and caring of this user community. So that's a quick summary of user management. We've used Campaign Drive as a, an example platform, but you may have, as a creative operations leader, you may have three or five There's different systems, all of which need to um, reflect good user management practices. So hopefully this was at least a, a, a pointer in the right direction in that regard. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Creative Operations Podcast, and we'll see you next time.